Matthew, you have to start acting like a young lady. You know what I just heard? Chester put a boy on a girl's soccer team. So one of my friends on the internet recommended a story for me to tell you. It's a sports story called Ladybugs. It's a trap! I want to love you like a lover should. So we meet this guy Chester, who's trying to improve himself by going for a promotion. He joins one of those self-help cults in order to gain some self-confidence, but given that he's 71 dating a woman with a teenager, you'd think he'd feel pretty okay about himself. Well, that old bastard. Maybe if you were more attractive, then it would be less disturbing. But apparently Bess will only marry him under two conditions. One, he gets along with her kid. Who hates his guts? And I'm guessing he's not too thrilled about his mom bringing home a grandfather figure. And I give him a BB gun, he gave me a sweatshirt with a bullseye in her back. And two, he gets the promotion so she can quit her job. My promotion is in the bag. I can hear those wedding bells now. He has a five-year plan. What is it? Don't die? The next day, we find out that he's the top salesman in the company when he hits on the boss's secretary, by implying she used to be a prostitute. I bet in your day you sold a few things yourself, huh? Because if I can't sell it, I'm gonna sit right down on it. But when he meets his boss, he suddenly forgets how to speak. You know, and I figured that, uh, you know, I'm due, uh, well, you know, I'm entitled. Uh, I, I figured, you know. Uh, and his boss must be thinking, how does this dumbass get such good numbers? He has no interest in promoting Chester. But Chester mentioned soccer, and Mr. Mullen's wife had just told him that he wouldn't get any action unless their daughter's soccer team wins. And they need a new coach, so now he has a use for this bumbling idiot. And to make matters worse, he doesn't know anything about soccer. What position did you play? Sweep a forward, backward, outfield, tight end, I played them all, you know? And he only thinks that if he brings home a trophy, he'll get the promotion. He also volunteers his secretary, Julie, to be his assistant coach, which of course she does, because no one can tell their boss no, even when it's their own personal time off the clock. But he might have been better off without her, since she doesn't know how to eat a sandwich right. Julie, look at the way you're eating! Well, lucky for them, this team wins every year, so they just plan on letting the girls do their thing and win again. Too bad there's only one player on the team from the years before, and it's not the boss's daughter. And Kim eventually shows up late to play on a team with a bunch of 12-year-olds when she's clearly like 15. And he shows her absolutely no favoritism whatsoever. Now he's kissing the daughter's ass. We then go to the first game and see that they literally know nothing. Not even how to stand properly. They had the first game before they ever practiced? I don't think so. I mean, he's in different clothes, and his boss is acting like he's been able to teach him something already, but neither coach has bothered to read the coaching manual yet. Hello, and welcome to the wonderful world of coaching youth soccer. So, I have no idea how long it's been. They end up losing 9-0, and Mr. Mullins hints that if they can turn the team around, that he might get the promotion. The kind of leadership I want at the head of my sales department. Taking this a little more seriously, he goes to work on Monday, dressed as a coach to a job where he would normally wear a suit, and then talks about quitting the team, to which Julie thinks would get him fired. But then Bess shows up to show him wedding invitations. See, she thinks he got the promotion, and he hasn't told her about coaching the team yet. This sort of goes with a promotion, you know? So the son likes him now? No, he still hates his guts. I guess she forgot about her first rule, or figures she could get some prep work done before they work it out. She says that her son Matthew only thinks about sports and hasn't turned in any homework for the last two weeks. So now he can't play sports at school. So she wants Chester to talk to him about it instead of, you know, parenting her own child. Go to your room. I think. Or do whatever you want. Which is really stupid, since what he got out of this conversation about her kid not doing his schoolwork is that the team will take him back. They'll take him back. They need him. He's a natural. Even though the school is doing exactly what Chester said he needed. Well, Matthew needs discipline. Then he realizes Matt's afternoons will be free, and since his plan of having the girls do the work for him didn't work, he now figures that Matt can do all the work for him. Wait. This whole time he's been complaining that he doesn't know anything about soccer, but he knows someone that he calls a natural? Yeah, it really makes you question his intelligence. And when he tries to get his help, he makes it seem like he's doing Matt a favor, but he sees through his crap right away. You didn't come out here to help me. You came out here for something that you want. Kind of makes you wonder how crappy the other salesmen are if he's the best. I mean, I'm not the smartest guy in the world. Maybe he's right. So Chester begs and admits he didn't get the promotion, giving the kid, who doesn't like him, ammo to get rid of him. Your mother thinks I got it. I just can't tell her the truth. But Matt goes down and watches him play anyway, where he sees that Julie's doing all the coaching, while Chester sits on his ass and expects God to work for him too. Oh God, give me a break! I gotta get the promotion! I wanna marry Bess! But then he sees Kim playing, and has a weird daydream about them wearing shitty outfits to a soundtrack that no teenage boy would choose. Dream. But it's interrupted by Kim's crappy aim. And I guess he got a boner or something? I think little Maddie is trying to say... Hello. 
because instead of using this opportunity to help his crush with a subject he knows a lot about, he runs up to the van. I hope the girls don't think I had a chubby all day. He agrees to help, but since he's only ever been a player, that's how he phrases the advice. And Chester stares at the teenage boy like he's the answer to all his dreams. Just don't look at me like that. It makes me feel uncomfortable. Sorry, milady. So at the next game, he slaps a wig on Matt, calls him Martha, and introduces him to the team. But he didn't even want to look at the team. Why would he do that for a guy he doesn't even like? Well, this kind of thing happens all the time. People get you to agree to the tiniest little favor, and before you know it, you're babysitting their kid. Oh, it's just this once. She'll be asleep in no time. You'll barely have to do anything. And now it's every freaking week, and I'm going to have to do this for the rest of my life since you don't age. Oh, sweet revenge. Do these of us fight us work perfectly? Anyway, he throws him in the game where he performs so well that he almost single-handedly wins the game, but they lose by one. Then Chester is mad that he didn't let him play as a team, even though he never practiced with them, only saw them for like three minutes, and doesn't know anyone's abilities. So he yells at him on the ride home, One person doesn't win a game, the team wins the game! Apparently forgetting he's doing him a humongous favor that he originally emphatically said no to. No way. No way, Chester. It'll never happen. No, you're crazy, Chester. It'll never happen. It'll never happen. No! I don't take no for an answer. And then when Matt quits, I quit. Chester's shocked. Matthew, we had a deal. Don't let me down. Well, what did Matt get out of the deal? I have no idea. But Chester is so pissed off at this teenage boy that doesn't want to give up months of his life pretending to be something he's not that he wants him to die. The next time you jump out of a car, make sure it's moving. So now that his plan of exploiting her teenage son is out, he has to suck it up and tell his fiance the truth. This doesn't seem like one of those truth will set you free situations. So he acts like a sulky jerk for a minute, giving Matt, who must have got out of the car like a block away, time to get home. But when Matt hears how excited his mom is, he somehow feels that it would be his fault if he ruins it, and not the fault of the jackass who lied to her and now wants him to be a part of that lie. But maybe it's because his mom seems to put the blame on him for not getting along with Chester. I'm sure it'll be better after we're married. And now that Chester is finally going to come clean, he interrupts them and tells his mom that he joined a new soccer team. And he oddly even calls Chester a great guy. The coach is a really nice guy once you get to know him. I finally got some respect. So now that he has Matt back on the hook, he takes him shopping and makes him put on the frilliest flowery dress he can find. What? Seriously, never do favors for anyone. Once you start down the dark path, forever will it dominate your destiny. But this athletic teenage boy isn't flexible enough to work a zipper, so Chester has to go into the changing room with him, and their dumbassery potentially kills some old lady. Seeing a boy in a dress killed her? Well, their conversation could have been taken the wrong way. God, I can't believe I'm doing this. Don't worry, I'll be finished soon. But I want your mother to find out. She'll kill me. But her seeing the direction of their feet should have cleared that up. Well, it turns out that the old lady's actually one of Matt's teachers, and she tried to stop Matt from getting into Chester's van outside of the school. Men, they only want one thing. So she may feel like she failed him somehow. But when she kills over, she probably thinks that Chester's trying to hit on the little girl that she's with, making her potentially his next victim. She'll get over it. Anyway, Matthew was embarrassed when the lady saw him, and now he's walking around the mall with the wig and the dress, while Chester gives him some advice on how to be more ladylike. You have to be considerate, loving. Giving. How old is this story? All the girls have to wear dresses and act the exact same? Oh no, this story is from the 90s. He could have wore shorts and a t-shirt the whole time. He's just remembering the good old days before women could vote. There's a woman in there. Listen, bud. Hey, this is the 90s. Women are treated equal. <laughs> what does a woman know? And I haven't even got to the worst part. Since he has Matt in a dress, he now gives him advice on how to deal with boys. Apparently, he feels like Matt has to go deep undercover. With boys, as a young lady, you always say no. Which I guess makes him feel so emasculated that he has to prove he's still tough. So he starts hitting a speed bag in front of a bunch of guys his own age. Well, Chester drags him out, only to confront the always scandalous, which bathroom do I go in question. It's a trap! But what I would rather know is how they explain to the saleswoman why he's wearing the dress out that he claimed was for his twin sister. Nice diversion. It's now the day of the third match, and Chester's boss is warming up to him. But Bess shows up, and Chester can't let her see Matthew playing, or she'll freak out and give up the secret. So he pushes her back to her car as fast as he can. Well, what if she wanted to go to one of Matt's games? Well, they don't seem too worried about it, so she must be one of those women who, once they're dating someone, they don't have time for anyone else. I just think you should consider what kind of example you're setting. It's probably a good thing she's not that bright. You're confusing me. What are you trying to say? But why would anyone want to watch somebody coach a team anyway? 
This isn't normal! On the field, we see that Matthew has helped some of the players get better, but it seems that Kim still sucks, and the Mullins are embarrassed by this. Chester's gonna leave her in the game, but is gonna replace Penny, who is flat out refusing to play. I don't want to, I'm scared. But Matt talks him out of it to give her more confidence. Well, what about the confidence of the other player who's benched over a player who isn't doing crap? Oh, well see, we don't know her name, so we don't give a crap about her confidence. But it works out, because she instantly gets over all of her fears and helps out. Oh, positively perfect pass play, Penny Pester! But then, Matthew gets hit in the nuts, and they're worried the on-field nurse might discover the secret. But she's a moron, who needs a book to figure out what to do when a ball hits someone too hard. But they go on to win, and Chester celebrates by hugging his boss's wife too much and is so intent on molesting her that he shoves the kid whose approval and assistant he needs away, even though this is the first time he's ever shown him any affection. We're not, we're not there yet. A few days later, Chester and Bess are driving when they get a call from Martha, who needs a ride home from Kim's house. The team went to the Mullins house after practice that Chester apparently didn't go to, and Mrs. Mullins is holding the girls hostage until their mothers pick them up. But the team all want to go skinny dipping and are refusing to go without Martha. Now Matthew's managed to hide, but they're hunting him down, so Chester needs to think quick, and since time was of the essence, he drops Bess off at home, switches cars, goes out and buys a dress, shoes, and a hat with a veil before he goes to pick him up at a house he's never been to. So instead of us seeing all the girls improve or come together as a team, we only know that they're doing good because of newspaper clippings and Mr. Mullen spending way too much money on scoreboards for office reveals. And also show that his wife likes the results too. The only direct improvement we know about comes from Chester being creepy again and telling another little girl she's pretty. Just my luck, you probably wouldn't even go out with me, huh? And at the next game, we see that Kim is still kicking too hard and embarrassing her parents. She's embarrassing me. But this time, they want her pulled from the game. Against his better judgment, Chester does. But then the game ends 30 seconds later, and we now know that Mr. Mullins is just a dick who always has to get his way. <laughs> you're right, I love to win. Kim's feeling bummed about it and needs a friend, so she somehow tracked down where Martha lives and randomly shows up. Matthew has to put on the dress and the wig and then invites her in. Well, why didn't he just pretend like nobody was home? Well, back in the 90s, you would never do something like that. And it's a good thing he didn't because after they get comfy, his mom and Chester show up. He tries to talk to both of them, changing every time he leaves the room, but ends up getting caught by his mom after he gets Kim out of the house. And she is not happy that Chester put her son in this situation. He tries to explain, I did this for you. And after she won't buy his crap about Matt just wanting to dress like this. You know how kids are, they're always doing crazy things. But she tells him to leave. But I'm finished buying your bullshit, now get out of here. So he's going to be homeless? No. People from his generation were stoned if they tried to live together before marriage. She must feel really bad. So what does she do to make it up to Matt? Oh no, she doesn't feel bad at all. In fact, she's pissed at Matt. Go to your room! And she conveniently forgets that she was the one who forced this authority figure on him that seriously took advantage of that position. Way to victim blame. She's very classy. Anyway, the championship game comes around, and they're up against a team that's run by a drill sergeant. And them being a team with a bunch of new players, I can see why that would be intimidating. But the newspaper has been favoring this team all season, even though the Ladybugs have won the title for at least the last five years. Boy, look at all those trophies, huh? <laughs> but Julie works with them on drills, while Chester sits on his ass. Mr. Mullins tells him that his daughter won't be playing. Apparently his wife abandoned the if our daughter isn't happy, I'm not happy mentality after she realizes that she sucks and now just cares about winning. So when Chester tells him that Martha won't play, he completely loses his shit. So Martha needs to play so he can stay on top. Or bottom. I'm, I really don't care what he's into. I don't care where she is. You get that girl down here. The team needs her. And this is before cell phones, so he expects him to leave the game and track her down. But he also threatens his promotion, and as nice as that would be to get, he only wanted it so Bess could be a freeloader, but she dumped his ass, so he really doesn't give a shit anymore. And that's why when Matt shows up, he tells him not to change. But I love your mother more than winning. But the only reason he cared about winning was to get the promotion, to get married, so this declaration makes no sense. And then Matt tells him that using him as a pawn to get ahead made him see what a great guy he is, and he should believe in himself. Chester, have confidence in yourself. Because in case you forgot, this guy that spends most of his time putting other people down has low self-esteem. I am great! I'm great! I am wonderful! I'm wonderful. Everybody Everybody likes likes me. Me. Then he tells him that Kim's not playing either, so he heads to her house. Chester breaks the news to the team that Martha won't be there, and they lose their minds get depressed, and pretty much just get stomped in the first half. But Matthew gets to the Mullins' place and reveals to Kim that he's a boy by taking off his wig. But a not-so-subtle halftime show implies that he may have shown her more. 
Where have you been? Tis firm! Tis firm as stone! Oh, I, I like this. So they get back to the field, and Matthew dresses up as Martha, and they bring the team in. They're ecstatic that Martha's back, but are totally like, who gives a shit when they see Kim? But then Matthew takes off his wig to show the team who he really is. <gasps> a boy! Are the girls mad that there was a boy on their team? No. Most of them actually think he's cute, and are really kind of fine with it. Let me play with him? No! But Chester says that Martha was just a crutch that they don't need anymore, because they got better as a team. So they go out, and Mullen sees that Kim is playing, so Dave tells Chester to take her out so he doesn't get embarrassed. And that's when Chester says he's doing what's best for the team, and he can fire him if he wants. But his daughter's playing. And I feel like he should have pointed out that her being on the team was why his wife wanted them to win so bad in the first place. Plus, they're already losing, so how could it get much worse? I thought being on my dad's team would make us closer somehow. But then the guy who emotionally manipulated his girlfriend's teenage son decides to give parenting advice. How could you do that? And Chester yelling at him makes him realize what an asshole he is. And he's like, I don't even deserve this sweater. But the team goes out there and starts scoring after they learn how to talk shit. Out of my way, sucker! Get pissed off. Mom, those bitches broke my nail! And blinding yourself in two different ways to impress a man in his 70s. Beautiful! I told you you're beautiful! But now the score is tied up and they change out the goalie to the girl they took out of the position after they lost the first two games and hasn't played that position since. But she's somehow good with no further training. I want that goalie tested for steroids! And then with six seconds left to go, Kim gets tripped and awarded with a penalty kick. She looks to her parents for moral support, and of course, they're great. But then she sees Matthew and scores. And her parents are like, Oh, sweetheart, we love you again. That's my daughter! How did she suddenly know how to kick right? Eh, Julie spent like five minutes coaching her after halftime. I really don't know why they didn't think of that before. Easy. Okay, okay, okay. Mr. Mullins then goes to Julie and tells her that he heard Chester put a boy on the team and thinks that he deserves the promotion for thinking outside the box. But he never did anything. Matt and Julie did all the work. Yeah, that's exactly how execs think. They give no credit to the ones who do the work, or train the people who do the work. They reward lazy assholes who do nothing, blame everyone else when crap goes wrong, and take credit when something good happens. But at least Matt gets a date with Kim out of this. Bess is also waiting for Chester after the game because she forgives him. And since she hasn't forgiven Matt yet... She's not talking to me too much either. We have to assume that she went to work all week and realized that she could have quit this shithole if she would have just gone through with the engagement. So she went back to him as quick as she could. And it seems that she was only really mad about the lying. How could you keep lying to me like this? And not the abusing your position of authority to get kids to do what they don't want to do part. Because next year, Chester is coaching a girls softball team with all boys. Again, this story was a request. So if there's another bedtime story you'd like me to read, go ahead and leave that in the comments. And make sure to hit like and subscribe while you're at it. When you got up this morning and you looked in the mirror, you will lose us! But then you hit the subscribe button! Now, look at you! Stay out, you sicko! We don't want your kind in here!